I'm trying to establish whether General Boykin's going to be able to make it. If he can't, um, then our last presenter will be a distinguished military officer of great renown, uh, former four-star Navy Admiral James A. Ace Lyons. Uh, Admiral Lyons has been the chairman of the Center's military committee for five or six years now, I think it is, and I never cease to be amazed at his industry, uh, his energy, um, his clarity of thought, and particularly how he understands, in part on the basis of hard experience, the nature of this challenge we face today and the kinds of things laid out with his help in this strategy that need to be undertaken to address it. Um, I've asked him to sort of be the cleanup batter for this uh, set of presentations. I appreciate everyone's uh, brevity and, and uh, hopefully that will give us some time for questions before we have to. But I did want to just say that he has been there, truly, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these jihadists uh, way back from the beginning of this phase of the War for the Free World, and I've asked him to illuminate some of that for us as well. Admiral Lyons, welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. Okay, Frank, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you by our own administration. The transformation of America has been in the full swing ever since 2008. President Obama's no-show in Paris was an embarrassment for all Americans. But it also was a signal to the Islamic jihadis. It's one of many signals he's sent over the years while he's in office. Now, there's no question we got a hell of a job ahead of us. With the Muslim Brotherhood penetration in every one of our national security agencies, including all our intelligence agencies, and as been reported by some, our lead intelligence agency headed by a Muslim convert, this is not going to be an easy task. Now, we've had many opportunities over the years to change the course of history. And as Frank had mentioned, starting with Jimmy Carter, when the Iranians took over our embassy, we could have cut off Islamic fundamentalism on the knees. But we did not act. He rejected what could have been a very dramatic action with minimum involvement, and it would have been dead. We've had other opportunities, such as the Marine barracks bombing. Everybody wondered why we never responded. You know, the, I won't go into all those details in the interest of brevity, and Frank shaking his head, he's getting ready to give me the hook. But I have to tell you, we could have changed the course of history then. It became Osama bin Laden's rallying cry. So here we are today. Political correctness has neutralized all our military leadership. You know, I don't know how many of you saw Les Gelb's article yesterday. Any of you see it? He called for the entire firing of the entire executive branch of government, unheard of, including Valerie Jarrett. Of course, he left one person out, the one man 
who really determines the policy. Now we have a new Congress. They were elected to stop the transformation of America, not to see how they could work with the president. This is pure nonsense. You know, we've been saying, people describe the threat, the threat is Islam. Let's make no mistake. There's no such thing as radical Islam because I'd like somebody to give me a definition of moderate Islam. There ain't any. So, and I think it was Erdogan of Turkey who said it best. Islam is Islam. There are no modifiers. We've looked for a leader to come stand up and try to modify Islam. And it was previously mentioned here. On New Year's Day, President al-Sisi, standing before all the leading Sunni clerics, called for a reformation of Islam. Monumental. He then went to celebrate Christmas Mass at a Coptic church and pledged to rebuild all the churches. Clearly, he better bring his insurance policies up to date. But this is momentum. And the administration didn't even give it the tip of the hat. Absolutely no acknowledgement. So it certainly tells you where their sympathies lie. It is up to this Congress. They've been given the mantle. We are giving them the game plan on how to proceed and prevent the transformation of this great country. Thanks very much. Thank you. Back. Uh, Mayor Acosta, ABIM News Agency. Uh, most of the speakers spoke about uh, about political correctness as the problem. I know it's a very, very, very broad question, but is there anything that can be done about political correctness? We get to vote every four years. That's helpful. Cor well, that's a political corrective. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, the one thing you can do, you can make uh, military leadership live up to their oath of office. That's a good first step. And, of course, facing this, kind, we didn't really touch on it, but the unilateral disarmament of our military just didn't happen by chance. Uh, the economic meltdown that Kevin talked about, you know, really was the perfect storm for Obama to implement the unilateral disarmament of our military. And that's what's been going on. All this faculty lounge, lounge crap about how we're going to handle uh, future disputes uh, through negotiations, they forgot one important element. The only thing that makes uh, diplomatic negotiations work is a strong military because they know if they don't conform we're going to hammer them. Right now we've been put on a defensive of that. All of that has to be turned around by this Congress. The social engineering that has gone on with our military forces, undercutting morale and the fundamental will to win, this has to change. And the <laughs> I'll stop there. I can I'll get well.